let's go on to number um, 21. All right, we're about to move into radians. So if, uh, if you're not clear on the coterminal stuff for degrees, you should go back and be sure about that and then come back to this one on 20, uh, starting at 21. Uh, 21 gives us an angle of 28 pi over 9. Okay. Um, now, all we want to find is two angles, one positive, one negative, that are coterminal with 28 pi over 9. That means that they are one full circle. Start at 28 pi, 28 pi over 9, go a full circle, you'll land at the same place. Just like if you turn 360 degrees, when you, you know, if you close your eyes, turn 360, open your eyes, you're looking in the same place, right? Um, that means you kind of start in the same position as you did uh, when you started, or you end in the same position. Anyhow, um, if we want to start at 28 pi over 9 and go a full circle, well, we need to go a full circle in radians, since this is in radians rather than degrees. So we want to start at 20 pi, 28 pi over 9 and go a full revolution from there. Then I need to go in radians. What's a full revolution in radians? Remember, halfway around is pi, so all the way around would be two of those, two pi. Okay, but we can't just add two pi to this fraction. We need to have a common denominator. Multiply by nine in the numerator and denominator, and you'll have 18 pi over nine. That's the same as two pi. So in the end, we have 30, 46 pi over nine. 46 pi over nine. Let's work going the other direction. All right. If I want to get a negative angle, then I need to start subtracting stuff off. If I want to go negative, I'd better start subtracting from a positive number. If I want to go a full revolution, we just looked at a full revolution is 18 pi over 9, so subtract 18 pi over 9. Only the it, this is 28 and this is 18. I can tell that this is not big enough to make this negative. Okay. Well, I'll try again. I'll subtract another 18 pi over 9. Uh, and I think that's going to be enough, right? Uh, because 18 and 18, you subtract 18 from, from negative 18, and you'll have negative 36. So 28 minus 36, that's a negative 8. Negative 8 pi over 9. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's what we need to do. If we want to find a negative angle that's coterminal, we need to subtract a full revolution. Um, let's do another radian one, 22. It's 20 pi over 3. OK. So finding the positive, very easy. right? Take 20 pi over 3. It's already positive. So just add another full revolution. Um, we're going to add 2 pi, that's a full revolution, but we can't add 2 pi to 20 pi over 3, we need a common denominator. That's going to be 6 pi over 3, and 26 pi over 3 is an angle that's positive, that's coterminal, with 20 pi over 3. Now, with this one, you can see, well, we had to, mul we had to um, take off multiple full rotations to be able to get into the negative, right? Uh, so, I come over to this one, we can see we're going to have to take multiple full revolutions off, but I don't want to do this one piece at a time, you know, subtract 6 pi over 3 and say, oh, that's not big enough, do it again, oh, that's not big enough, do it again. Um, so let's see how many full revolutions there are here, and then just subtract off more than that so that we make sure we get into the negative. So this is 20 pi over 3. Remember that 2 pi is a full revolution. Um, so how many full revolutions are there? A full revolution in thirds would be not three thirds. That's halfway around. So, uh, you know, all the way around would be six of those. Six pi over three would be all the way around. So the question is, how many times do I get those? How many six pi over threes are in twenty? Pretty simple answer. Take twenty divided by six. Uh, six goes into twenty three and a little bit more, right? So what that means is this is um, I've gone around uh, for twenty pi over three. I've gone around once, twice, three times. How many is that in thirds? Well, each of these is 6 pi. 6 pi over 3, 12 pi over 3, 18 pi over 3, and a little bit more all the way around here 
to 20 pi over 3. So if I want to you know, like unwind this so that I start going negative, I'm going to have to go around uh, at least three times and a little bit more so that I go from, from negative to positive, right? I need to go around once, twice, three, and a little bit more to get all the way around uh, to into the negative area, okay? So, if this is three revolutions and a little bit more, then I shouldn't just subtract off three revolutions because that wouldn't be enough. Let's subtract off four revolutions, okay? And remember, each revolution is six pi over three. So if I want to take off four of these, then I want to subtract 24 pi over three. Okay, and I know I'm going around in full revolutions because 24 is a multiple of six, and that's how many pi over threes make a full revolution. So 20 minus 24, that's negative, four pi over three, okay? Positive, negative angle, both of these angles are coterminal because we added and subtracted full revolutions, coterminal with the original angle, 20 pi over three, all right? Okay, now that we've done a lot of work with radians, now let's go back to degrees and then from degrees to radians. And to understand how and why and all that good stuff, uh, think about, I told you there's 137 inches, you know. Um, actually, let me, let's say that I told you somebody was 56 inches tall, right? Sometimes people do that. You know, you measure a baby in so many inches and for some reason you never stop and, and you tell somebody somebody's 56 inches tall and you know why don't you just tell me how many feet that is okay so that's what we're gonna do how do we figure out how many feet this is um, and you may say correctly it's really easy to divide it by 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot and if you divide it just into chunks of, of 12 you'll know how many feet there are okay but we'll use this simple example to um, kind of extrapolate it into um, into our purposes to convert from radians to degrees and, and back and forth. So we're going to use a conversion ratio, right? And that conversion ratio will take us from inches to feet. Well, I know that if I divide this by a number of inches, the inch uh, units are going to cancel out. And if I multiply that canceled out inches by feet, then I'll have feet. Okay. So. But I can't just multiply this by some number unless this number is 1. If this number were 1, it doesn't change anything, and it's perfectly fine. So let's make both of these the same. Uh, well, this is 1 foot to 12 inches. That's the same. A foot and 12 inches, exactly the same thing. So now we have the nice thing that happens here is the inches cancel out, and then I can find out how many feet this is. And 56 divided by 12, or 56 times 1 twelfth, that's not a very tall person. That's 4.67 feet. Okay, the person is is a little short, unless they're, you know, not fully grown. Then they're perfectly fine. Or if they're really young, then they're a freak, uh, like a baby or something. Anyway, uh, that's how we do it, right? We multiply by this conversion ratio where the top, the numerator, and the bottom, the denominator, are equal to each other. Um, let's do one more like that. Um, say 16 centimeters but we don't use centimeters here in America uh, thank you very much we use inches um, and if we want to know how many inches that is then we need to convert and if we want to convert we need to know how many centimeters are in an inch if we want to convert from centimeters to inches then I need to know that so I happen to know there are two and a half approximately two and a half centimeters in an inch so one inch and two and a half centimeters, um, roughly the same. And now I can convert. 16 divided by 2.5. That's 6.4 inches. Now I kind of, you know, it's roughly more than half a foot. And that gives me an idea of, of how much 16 centimeters is. All right. So that's the general idea. Multiply by a ratio, an equivalence ratio, which means that the numerator and denominator are equal. They're just in different units. And the unit that you want to cancel out is here in the denominator. The unit you want to be left with is in the numerator. Okay. So um, let's start with 24. 
and we're going to convert uh, 315 degrees into radians. Um, so what we need is a ratio of radians and degrees. I know I'm going to want radians in the denominator and degrees up here in the numerator. And with radians, there's not actually like an, a, a letter or a symbol you write. If you're talking about angles and you don't write anything down, you assume it's radians. It's kind of funny that way. Um, okay, so now we need some kind of equivalence between a number of degrees and a number of radians. Take a look again at this thing that we drew earlier. Actually, I could, act, I could really actually find it. Uh, or maybe I can't. All right, there you go. Remember, we, we wrote all these um, equivalences together. We could use 30 and pi over 6. They're the same. They're the exact same thing. Uh, you could use 90 and pi over 2. They're the exact same thing. What I want you to take note of is these are all fractions. These fractions are not going to work well in a fraction. When we come along to 180, this isn't a fraction. So that's going to be the, the nicest, the easiest one to use. So we'll multiply it so that the degrees are in the numerator. So 180 degrees. Uh, oh, I got it backwards. 180 degrees should be in the num in the denominator. Right? We want to cancel the degrees. So in the numerator, we want there to be radians. How many radians is the same as 180 degrees? If we look right there. It's it's written right next to 180 degrees. It's pi radians. So the degrees cancel each other out. And we'll leave the pi in there. We won't, you know, use that and make a decimal. We'll just do 315 divided by 180. Um, so 7 pi over 4. Right, and we could say that clearly 5 goes into 180 and 315. 315 divided by 5 is 63. And 180 divided by 5 36 and then 3 goes into both of these so 36 divided by 3 that's 12 and 63 divided by 3 we're just simplifying a fraction here 21 and then 3 goes into both of these right just simplifying that fraction 7 pi over 4 it's converted from degrees to radians uh, let's do another 25 negative 260 degrees we're going to go from degrees to radians. We're going to multiply this by a ratio that cancels the degrees. That means the degrees are in the denominator, and the radians are in the numerator. Uh, and this, the fact that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians is just as true now as it was there. So we'll just use the same equivalence. 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So the degrees cancel each other out, and we could say uh, 260 and 180 both have 10 that go into them. So 260 uh, divided by 10. What this is silly. 26 and 18. And uh, let's see, at least a 2. So this is 13 and 9. And that's it. 13 is uh, prime. So there we go. We have reduced. We've simplified that fraction as much as possible in 13 pi over 9. That's how many radians we're working with. All right. Uh, we've got a few more, so I'm just going to leave this video at that, and I'll see you in the next.